Hey, hey, you're tuning in to another Sanji Valley Tips and Tricks video. Now, if you're someone that likes to build a lot of buildings via the carpenter, whose name is also Robin, in the mountains, and you want to start optimizing these buildings for your late game farm, then you've come to the right video. This video is pretty much like a breakdown of these buildings so you can capitalize on these buildings and make the most money for your late game playthrough. Let's start off with the coop, which is generally like the first building that you might place in your playthrough. To place down a coop, you'll need 4,000 gold, 300 wood, and 100 stones. The coop actually has two upgrades to further develop that coop so then it becomes bigger so there's more space within it, but also it unlocks a few things within the coop. At its basic state, which is when you first place the coop, the only thing that's available to place within it is chickens. The only way for you to get chickens the first time you place down the coop is by going over to Mighty and purchasing them for 800 gold each. There are two types of chickens, there's the white and the brown, and if you want to switch in between colors, you can always back out before you buy one, so then you can place one again and hopefully Mighty will give you the other color. The reason for the true colors is that the brown chicken and the white chicken will produce brown eggs and white eggs respectively, so the color of the chicken will produce that colored egg. This actually has no effect on the egg other than if you need to hand in a certain colored egg for the community center. These chickens will only produce you small normal eggs and for you to get large eggs from them you'll need to pet them and feed them daily to ensure that they're in a happy state for them to become mature. Not only do we have these chickens but you can also later on get your hands on some blue chickens which are only available when you raise your hearts with Shane to an 8 heart event which you will need to see. There's actually no impact in blue chickens, they pretty much act just like brown and white chickens, it's just like a way for you to show off that you have some blue chickens on your farm. Once you have the right amount of money, wood and stone, you can upgrade your coop into a big coop. This big coop will now widen the space of the coop within it and now you can house yourself 8 animals within it. This coop upgrade actually unlocks the incubators which if you have an egg in your inventory, you can place it within the incubator and then in a few days that egg will hatch and an animal will come out and start to live in that coop as long as you have room in that coop. Not only does this upgrade unlock incubators, but it actually unlocks the ability to place some other animals within this coop, including ducks, void chickens, dinosaurs, and golden chickens. Once the upgrade is done, you can head over back to Marnie's to purchase your very first duck for 1200 gold, or by hatching a duck egg via the incubator. Ducks then after will start to produce you duck egg and duck feather. Void chickens, which are only available by having a void egg in your inventory and placing them in an incubator, will produce your void chickens chickens and they will also produce you void eggs. Dinosaurs just like void chickens will need a dinosaur egg in the incubator to unlock dinosaurs and dinosaurs will also produce you dinosaur eggs. And then we've got golden chickens which will need an incubator to turn your golden egg into a golden chicken which is unlocked when completing Sanji Valley 100% and they will also produce you golden eggs. And then we've got the final upgrade for the coop which is the deluxe coop which will house 12 different animals and will require 20,000 gold, 500 wood and 200 stone to construct. This will then unlock the auto feed system within the coop which means if you have a silo on your farm and it's got hay within it, instead of you having to replenish the hay into the trough for your animals, the auto feed system will automatically do this as long as you've got that hay in the silo. This upgrade will also house yourself rabbits now so you can head over to Marnie, purchase them for 8,000 gold and the rabbits will produce you wool and rabbit's foot. And now we've got barns which are very similar to coop especially with their upgrades and how much animal they can house within it. And just like coops, they've got the three stages. So there's the barn when you first place it, you've got the big barn when you upgrade it, and finally there's the deluxe barn. Looks like I've got animals in my backyard, they're going off, so I apologize about the audio if you can hear them. <laughs> the normal barn, which is the first barn you get to place down via the carpenter shop, unlocks the ability to house some cows. So head over to Mighty to buy your first cow for 1500 gold, but also save some money so you can purchase a milk pail from Mighty as well, because you'll need it so you can milk your cow daily. The color of the cow doesn't really matter, they both produce milk. It's actually just more of an aesthetic look. But after they start to mature by you petting them and feeding them, they'll start to produce you large milk. Then when you upgrade your barn into a big barn, you unlock the ability to house some goats, which you can purchase over at Mighty for 4,000 gold each. They act just like cows, but they actually only produce milk every second day. So when you start to milk them, you'll get goat milk. And once they become mature after feeding them and petting them, they'll start to produce you some large goat milk. Then with the final upgrade being the deluxe barn, you unlock the ability to house yourself some sheep, which can be bought over at Mighty for 8,000 gold, but I would also recommend buying yourself some shears so you can cut off the 
wool from the sheep. Pigs also become available with this upgrade and although they're very pricey to buy at 16,000 gold by Marnie, believe me in the long run they're going to be one of the most OP animals in the game. They'll start to produce you truffles which you can later on turn into truffle oil and that's an artisan good that sells for a lot of gold. And then finally as part of the 1.5 update there's ostriches. You can only find your first egg by one of the X marks the spots over at Ginger Island and you will also need an ostrich incubator which is given to you as a reward for completing the field office over at Ginger Island. And these ostriches will start to produce you ostrich egg every seven days. So let's say you do have yourself a coop and a barn. What animal should you be considering? Let's start off with like a coop for example and I'm going to compare all of these animals from best to last based on like a weekly production that they can make you so you can start to have an idea what is going to make you the most income. The best option obviously is golden chickens for the coop as you can only get them via completing the game 100% but they produce your golden egg once a day so if you have seven golden eggs by the end of the week and turn these golden eggs into golden mayonnaise via a mayo machine, one chicken can make you 5,985 gold per week. But obviously not everyone has 100% in Stardew Valley so the next bet is actually chickens. You want to have mature chickens within there so they can produce you large eggs which will then turn into gold star quality mayo. And when you're having 7 eggs a week and 7 gold star mayonnaise a week, a singular chicken can make you 1995 gold every week. After that a really good option is void chickens who produce you void eggs daily. So 7 eggs turned into void mayonnaise by the end of the week will make you 1125 gold by the end of the week. Dance are also a really good viable option but they produce you eggs every second day and sometimes the egg might be a duck feather instead so it's better off just by having a chicken or a void chicken instead. I'm going to do the same thing as the barns. I'm going to tell you the animals you want to consider in here based on a weekly production and how you can make the most money out of it. Pigs with truffles is honestly so important. Now obviously it is more of a late game thing, you do need a deluxe barn and you will also need to get your hands on an oil maker which is via level 9 of farming because truffles turn into truffle oil make you so much money. In the right circumstances truffles can actually be produced every day. The only time pigs won't produce you truffles is if it's raining outside or if it's winter because the pigs will never leave the barn for that reason. As long as you're feeding and petting your pigs daily they should be producing your truffles truffles daily. So in the best case scenario if you got 7 truffles being produced weekly you can turn that into 7 truffle oil and sell that for 7,455 gold. Right after that we've got cows but you want to make sure that they're mature so be sure that you're feeding and petting them so then they can produce your large milk. Large milk when put into a cheese press will actually make gold star quality cheese so in the best case scenario if you're milking your cow daily 7 days a week you'll get your hands on 7 large milk which is 7 gold star cheeses which in turn will sell for 2,415 gold. Right after that you'll actually need the 1.5 update for this but ostriches are also a really good pick. They produce you one ostrich egg per week and when you put that one ostrich egg into a mayo machine they actually produce you just 10 mayonnaise. Surprisingly the quality of the egg that the ostrich produces actually affects the quality of the mayonnaise. So if you have a gold star egg for example it will make you 10 gold star mayonnaise. In the best outcome you want to have the ostrich produce producing you iridium star quality eggs so then you can turn that into 10 iridium star quality mayonnaise and with the level 10 farming perk for artisan goods to be sold for 40% more you can be selling this iridium mayonnaise for 5,320 gold per week. These gold prices that I've actually mentioned for both the coop and the barn are not affected by the level 10 artisan perk except the mention that I've just mentioned for ostriches so if you want to make even more money you can actually sell your items as artisan goods with that level 10 perk to be making more money. But if you're someone that chose the rancher perk at level 5 instead of the tiller perk that unlocks the artisan perk at level 10, the animal products can still be sold at a decent amount at this point but surprisingly they make even more money when turned into artisan goods so I highly recommend going the tiller route and then the artisan perk route instead because it makes you more money in the long run. I'm just gonna throw this in here real quick if you're liking today's video why not consider liking if you want to see more videos why not consider subscribing my fuzzy delicious candles are still available I'll leave the link down below. Whew. 
That was a lot of mention of coups and bonds. I hope you sat through that. Next up, we're going to be moving away from coups and bonds. Don't you worry. We're actually going to talk about fish ponds, which are actually a really good viable option to place on your farm. The majority of fishes that you fish up in Stardew Valley can be placed within one of these. And this row that the fish can potentially produce you can actually be turned into age row via a preserve jar, which is an artisan goal, which can be sold for even more money. But better yet, even their items are a really good idea to consider. There is way too many fish to even mention when it comes to rows and age row. I actually do have a video about ponds if you want to have a check of that to have a good idea as to how row works and how ponds work more effectively. But if you actually just want to know about the best five fishes when it comes to row or even the best five fishes for items, I'll definitely mention the, the best five for each of these. So here is the top five fishes you want to consider when it comes to row. We first got Super Cucumber, which their row sells for 155 gold, but when put into a preserve jar, their age row sells for 300 gold. Then we've got Stonefish, which their row sells for 180 gold, but their age row sells for 360 gold. We've then got Blobfish, which their row sells for 280 gold, and their age row sells for 560 gold. We've got Ice Pip right after, which their row sells for 280 gold, and their age row sells for 560 gold. And the best fish you want to start considering is Larvae Eel, which their row sells for 380 gold, and their age row sells for 760 gold. When it comes to items, this is more of a personal opinion, but these are the top five fishes I like. There's definitely some other fishes that you might want to consider for their items, but here is my top five picks. Sturgeon is a really good idea as they have a chance to drop you Diamond, Omni Geodes, and Nautilus Shell. Super Cucumber, Spookfish, and Rainbow Trout all have a chance to drop you Diamond, Gold Bar, Iridium Ore, and Omni Geodes. Void Salmon has a chance to drop you Void Essence, Void Egg, Diamonds, and Iridium Ore. Lava Eel has a chance to drop you Diamonds, Mega Bombs, and Iridium Bar. And Stingray, if you had Ginger Island unlocked, is a really good pick as they have a chance to drop you Cinder Shards, Dragon Tooth, and Battery Packs. The next building you may want to consider is a mill, which is available via the Carpenter Shop for 2,500 gold, as well as 50 stone, 150 wood, and 4 cloth. The only reason to really consider a mill is if you're producing a lot of wheat, beets, and unmilled rice, as they produce you flour, sugar, and rice, respectively. If you find yourself growing these a lot, definitely consider a mill but the final products, which is the flour, the sugar, and the rice, can actually be purchased over at Pierre and the Joja Mart. So if you don't actually find yourself producing these, don't really purchase yourself a mill. You can actually save that space for something else. The next building I've mentioned, which I highly recommend, is sheds. I love sheds. I use them all the time in my playthroughs. I know they're kind of pricey to place down and to expand so then you can have more room within them, but a big shed actually has room for 137 machines or kegs that you can all reach and use, which saves you room on your farm. If you're someone that doesn't know how to organize their shed or just needs some ideas, I actually have a video which I will link up in the annotations and the description to help you on your, on your process of making a nice pretty shed. Shed. Many machines can actually be placed within a shed, whether it's your coupon bond machines or crystallariums, for example. And with the amount of space that's within there, you don't even need that many sheds within your farm. You can design it however you want, and you can place pretty much nearly everything within there. The ultimate farmer that is placing down coops and bonds should definitely have a silo. In fact, it is suggested to be putting down a silo before you have a coop and a barn, so you can start to fill in this silo with hay. So when you do have your animals available, you're at least prepared. A silo can hold up to 240 hay and more than one silo can be placed on a farm. All these silos are actually connected as well so when it comes to replenishing hay, you only really need to be placing your hay within one of the silos. Obviously the more silos you have, the more hay capacity you have within these silos. I am not one to be putting down slime hutches. I know a lot of people like using them but I generally don't like using them in my playthrough but I think I'm going to leave that for another video. Hope you enjoyed today's video guys. Take care.